Hi, panel. Uh, my question is specific to Mr Shackle. What mm. strategies do you propose for managing and safely disposing a potentially large quantity of nuclear waste? Mr Shackle. Well, thank you for your question, Noah, um, and I appreciate it. What I would say is the first thing as part of your question is the quantity of uh, waste or spent fuel, as it's referred to, with nuclear energy is incredibly small. In fact, all the spent fuel from every single nuclear reactor in operation uh, from the beginning of nuclear energy to now could actually fit easily inside a stadium, you know, like the Sydney Cricket Ground or another stadium like that. And if you look at the high-level waste, the spent fuel, uh, which is created to... Uh, if someone was being powered for their whole lives from nuclear energy, the size of it is about the size of a Coke can or like the glass of water I've got here. So it's an incredibly small volume of waste we're talking about. But it's radioactive, isn't it? Yeah. Y yes, but for decades we've been able to safely manage it. And the thing is, like, what about the waste from other energy sources? You look at fossil fuels, the waste that is emitted into the atmosphere from fossil fuels that we have to breathe in every day. There are consequences to that. Or renewables, and I understand that there are innovations in this space, and I think that's a great thing, but mm. let's be honest, the majority of renewables, solar panels, wind turbines, end up in landfill today. Specifically in regards to strategies about uh, spent fuel management, Basically, they're stored in canisters around the world today. It's incredibly safe. There are videos which you can search up on Google of trains running into them. They've tested it on, on jet planes to make sure it's secure. And there's never been an incident attributed to high-level waste nuclear management. And the last point I'd make is the government is inevitably going to have to deal with high-level waste or spent fuel as a result of their mm. AUKUS announcement, which they're spending hundreds of billions of dollars on. So at one uh, at one point or another, the government's going to have to work out a solution for this. And I think because of that, it makes sense to also up open up the opportunity for civil nuclear power reactors. Uh, look, Nikki, let me bring you in on this. Um, <laughs> Will certainly right that we're going to have to sort out storage of nuclear waste, not just for the low-level stuff that we've been using for a while, but for the, the, the AUKUS nuclear submarines, the high-level radioactive waste that'll come down the track too. Yeah, I find this interesting that, you know, the idea that even if you got rid of the ban, even if you ignored the economics of, of, of nuclear, which doesn't stack up, we're having huge arguments already between the states because no one wants the waste from AUKUS. In mm -hmm. Australia, we have yet to be able to get a permanent nuclear facility, storage facility, even though we've had Lucas Heights and we do have low level um, and some mid level uh, waste in Australia for, you know, what, 40 more mm -hmm. or more years. We don't... Australians don't want this. I mean, you say it's simple, but we've, we've had in planning... Some of the transmission lines have been stuck in planning for decades if a new transmission. Imagine what the planning processes are going to be like when we start talking about nuclear reactors. Whose backyard is that going to be in? The nuclear waste... Where are we going to store that? Because literally it is sitting around on shelves in laboratories at the moment. We don't have a way of doing this. Well, in Australia, this is absolutely true. In other parts, well, we even export a lot of our waste over to France for them to process and then bring it back here. We do not have the capacity. This is highly politically contentious. When you have... And I will actually say I do support nuclear because the sun is all about <laughs> nuclear power. And that's Ted. the only nuclear energy we absolutely need and it has no waste. Ted O'Brien, um, do you think when the Coalition does announce a detailed policy on this, will that have to include details around the storage of waste? Or, oh, or... There, there, there's no doubt that waste is, is critical to what we're looking at at the moment. Um, I think what a lot of people don't realise, David, is Australia has been managing mm. nuclear waste for well over 60 years. But not particularly well, because we've, we still don't have a permanent storage facility. Oh, David, I, uh, I, I don't want to be disagreeing with you of all people tonight, <laughs> but uh, I tell you what I have to on that front. But we've, we, we, we've, we've just gone round and around well, for 10 no, years. Well, no, to be honest, we have been uh, managing, including high-level waste, for over 60 years in this country. We have demonstrable expertise. We are well-renowned globally as being a successful nuclear country because we have a reactor. It's about 30 kilometres from where we are today. Mm. Mm. Um, we but where, where, does it, where does well. it store its waste? There's some uh, on site. Yeah, on, but is that, on site. That's close and, to capacity, isn't on, it? On site, um, well, uh, the, the rules are they're meant to be moving that to a site, which, was going, to be, which was going to be Kimber. This is my but, point. But we still haven't sorted this out. It's mm. just been knocked back by the federal court. So would you have to identify a site to permanently store not just the 
Lucas Heights waste, but the waste that your nuclear reactors would also... Again, David, we're, we're taking um, our lead from best practice globally. Right. Most uh, nuclear waste is stored on site. Some countries are looking at having a... potentially having a central repository. Um, for the life of the reactor, you can typically store it on site. And that would be your now, preferred approach. Now, learning the lesson from there, also because of the AUKUS deal, the Albanese government has agreed to manage high-level waste mm. in Australia. Mm. Now, Let me ask the Again, we learned that. from the UK... Yeah, we know the minister... Where's minister... it going to be permanently? I think right now that is a matter for the Albanese government. No, it is. This has to be sorted out. Uh, look, at maybe some decades before yes. that, nuclear waste exactly. is stored from the submarines. But it sounds like the Coalition might be suggesting on-site storage for any uh, small modular reactors. When, when are we going to see the well, government settle on a permanent facility? I'm none the wiser after Ted's answer, to be honest. But um, in relation to waste, we know a small modular reactor actually creates... The Stanford study shows up to 30 times more waste proportionally than a large nuclear reactor. And you're 100% right. Australia hasn't resolved this. The previous government, to their credit, tried. You know, points for trying. The Kimbersite had a good go. The Federal Court overturned it. It does underline just how complicated... You could have challenged that in the High Court. You didn't. Well, but the, the fact of the matter is it wasn't landed. The federal, well, not the previous government's fault. They tried, but the Federal Court knocked it over. And, yes, we've taken the decision not to argue with the Federal Court. And I think that's the right decision. I think it shows how hard it is. Now, in relation to the submarines. Remember when the previous government announced AUKUS? They said it had no implications for the civil uh, nuclear industry. There was no need to go down that. There were no links. That's what Scott Morrison said. That tune has changed since the election. Now they say, oh, you've got the nuclear submarines. You might as well have a nuclear power industry. There's a complete change of tune. Now, you're right. Yes, the nuclear submarines will generate some waste, only at decommissioning. Unlike a nuclear reactor, which generates waste every day, a nuclear submarine generates the waste at decommissioning. We're, we're a decade or so from getting one. We're many decades from decommissioning it. I have I a All right, we, I need have a keep, we need to keep moving. Can, Just uh, very, very quickly. Um, the Minister sits on the National Security Committee, the, the peak body for our strategic defence in this country. He has given commitments to the United States and to the United Kingdom that we can effectively mm. manage high-level nuclear waste. Here he is on national television saying that we can't. That is a serious concern. And just because you can take... No. No. Just, just very quickly, Will. Can I very quickly have a word? I don't think the issue here is the science. The issue here is politics. I think that's really clear. We have the solutions of how to manage spent fuel, high-level waste around the world, and I think it's a shame we're still having these discussions and fear-mongering about high-level waste spent fuel because I'm sure they wouldn't be having these discussions in France or in all of the other countries around the world which are able to successfully manage nuclear waste. And it's not an issue to them, but for some reason it is here in Australia and I think that says a lot about our politics today. Mm -hmm. All right.